Hello, everyone, and welcome to, to today's artist interview series. And we have here a wonderful artist, Catherine Blackwell, who I was informed to, to uh, uh, you know, call her by Katie. Katie, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. The kids are asleep. I'm happy. You're happy? I'm happy. What, what, made, what, what made you happy today? Um, I got to work on a lot of art. You did? That doesn't always happen. Um, and I've been home with my family all day. Your boy? Um, I've been home with my family all day. So Okay. Okay. Um, both of those things are good. I'm quite happy. And I'm so, doing good. Good. So uh, uh, how much art did you work on today? Um, probably like five hours, which is abnormal. Yeah? Five hours. And like, this, describe to me, like, what is your process when you work on like a art for five hours, like in depth, like literally just go as in depth. You're like, I need to do, I need to do 500 sit-ups. I got to have a scone to my right, a cup of coffee to my left. And in the middle is a box of like candied nerds or then, and I got to have, like, I got to tip myself. I got to give myself temptation and then select the right selection before I begin my art process. Uh, I usually go with scone and I dip in the coffee. You know, what's what's your beginning? What's your beginning process? Your middle process and how you kind of taper off. Well, this was a different day, so I will tell you my normal. Okay. Um, and it's never the same. And I am not a very strict person with a schedule, so it's kind of just fly by the seat of my pants mm -hmm. and hope that I don't get interrupted too much. A little bit's okay. Um, so I will make sure I have coffee. Have to have coffee. Maybe some seltzer. I have some here always. Um, if I'm doing acrylics, I'll make sure I have a fresh cup of water for my brushes and that I use um, a stay wet palette. So I make sure that the palette isn't dry, that the sponge isn't dry. What's a stay wet palette? Oh, it's the best thing. Now I am gonna sound like an infomercial. It's um for Masterson, it's a hold on. One second. Stay wet palette. I never heard of that. It and I'm an artist. The only thing that I don't I mess will... with Oh oh I've seen them. Okay. So underneath they have uh, It's like a cushion is... of water? Yeah, there's a sponge under it. See? Oh! And then palette paper, and it. This is acrylic paint that's been on there for a week. Oh wow! I need to talk to tell my students about that. But continue. Sorry. Oh, well, I was curious. Like when I also used to work for an art supply store for like eight years, so I'm kind of a nerd for art supplies. Um, but the that is the only reason why I can do acrylics. Otherwise, it just drives too fast and it drives me crazy. Um, I also do oils, so if I'm doing oils, then I have to make sure I have like my um, mineral spirits and whatever else I'm using, new colors. And then I'll just paint as long as I can. I do listen to podcasts and audiobooks, a lot of audiobooks, NPR. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just let my brain wander, and it could be four hours later, and I don't know it or it could be 20 minutes and I get interrupted and then go back for another 20 minutes and get interrupted. So it's, um, it's a little different every day, but more often than not, I will start and have no idea that it's been three hours. And then my husband will knock on the door and say, do you know what time it is? Cause usually I don't, it's like a vortex. You get sucked in. Why do you think that is? Um, I think that art is like my natural state, you know? So if I'm painting, my brain can just be still. Um, it takes the focus off of anything else. I can do it without any knowledge that I'm actually doing it. Like if I have a pencil in my hand, which I usually do, even if it's like at a meeting, I will have doodles everywhere. So like at work and at school, people would always know it was my piece of paper because it's just covered in doodles. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that it just puts my mind at ease and takes me to a really lovely meditative place. And it's just a good place for me to be. So five hours a day, huh? Yeah, broken up. But usually like it'll be, um, I'll start when the kids go to sleep and then paint until like 11 or 12. So, so usually like three hours. And it's never quite enough. It's never what? Enough. Quite enough? How, what would, uh, if you were, if you had the choice, like how long would you like to paint? All day. All day would be lovely. Yeah. Probably like eight hours. Eight but hours? with breaks. With breaks? Maybe some coffee breaks. And I would switch paintings probably. So I'll work on, especially if I'm doing oils, I'll have a couple of pieces I'm in the middle of so that when it gets to a point where um, it just starts getting muddy and I can't go any farther, I'll switch to a different painting. Um, And if it's acrylics, kind of the same, Um, even though it dries faster, it's good to to switch it just because at some point, if you keep putting layers on it, it starts pulling off the layers under it. Um, And it's good to have different perspective every now and then kind of like flipping the painting over like Mm -hmm. upside down so that you can get a clear picture of it in your head. Um, It's good to just switch it up. So how many paintings? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, as long as I have like an audio book or radio, if I don't have any sound or any music that I don't think I could go that long. Oh yeah. Yeah. So how, how can you get, st- how, me personally, I would find it hard to get started in 20 minutes, like, and stop. Like, that's yeah. when my, uh, like, I, I need, I would need at least an hour of, of momentum. Cause after 20 minutes, 20 minutes, I'm like, just now, like, okay, my painting brush, my paintbrush is just so, and I'm ready to, and no, someone's bothered me or something's occurred. Right. Yeah. So I like, that's, that's interesting. You can just get up and go. Well, if it was I pencil, it'd be different, yeah, for me. If I have the, the palette and everything set up, so if I do that first thing, okay, um, then because of the Stay Wet palette, I can just put the cover over it, and my whole palette doesn't dry mm-hmm. if I'm gone. So then every subsequent time that I start repainting, I just sit down and start. I just mm-hmm. put my – I have a lovely tripod, and I just put my phone in it, hit the podcast or the book that I'm listening to, and go. What podcasts or books are you listening to right now? Um, I try to catch up on the news. So uh, like all the NPR podcasts and um, Don't Ask Tig is really funny. I've been enjoying that. What's Don't, don't Ask What? Tig. Tig Nataro is a comedian. Oh. She's hilarious. And her podcast is great. Um, oh, there's a bunch of other like little ones. Um books i kind of go back and forth i like sci-fi so basically anything with outer space or wizards or witches or vampires i am a nerd so have you read all the harry potter books only like 50 times 50 times by reading i've probably read them like 10 times but i have all the audio books that i have listened to Probably more than fifty times. What's What's another good fantasy book that uh, that that you enjoy, or fantasy series? I have a whole like two libraries in my house. There's so many. Um, I love Cheryl and Kenyon. Um, she has like two different, well, more than two different series. That they're the Dark Hunter series, um, and another one about outer space. <laughs> But her writing is so great, and you can go through a book in, like, two days, even though it's 700 pages. Um, I think you can. I can't. (laughs) 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 I mean, page seven. Uh, (laughs) And that's why audiobooks are good, too, because if you don't have time to, like, sit and read it, um, if you're spending three hours painting, then you're Mm -hmm. listening to three hours of, of audiobooks. I just 
about a really good one about New York City. Like if it was a, um, if, if the boroughs had personalities and people were picked to be, um, like there was a Brooklyn and a Manhattan and they were all people that were supposed to like encompass who that city was. And then it became like a whole um, intergalactic war, but it was really, really good. I can't remember what it was called. I'll find it though. Okay. So how, uh, when you worked today, five hours spread up, did you work on one painting, two painting, three paintings, four, five, six? I've been working on just these two for a little while. Uh huh. And those are ones behind you right now. This kind of there. Um, the two ladies. Yeah. I was okay. trying to like hide the garbage behind me. So I stacked yeah. them up. Nice. <laughs> what kind of garbage did you have back behind you? Um, I have lots of glitter. Glitter. In boxes. Um, and canvas and more cardboard boxes. So what do you use the glitter for? What don't I use the glitter for? Okay, what don't you use it for? <laughs> I don't use it for my portraits, but most everything else. Um, I have a million things of glitter everywhere. Everywhere. Your also kids must love you? Yes, my husband <laughs> all that glitter. So much. But seriously, like anywhere I look, there's glitter everywhere. Um, we'll just like make fun projects. So my, my art room, is also just like a project room. Okay. So why, why glitter? I just like it. It's shiny. I'm like a, a dragon. I like shiny things and hoarding shiny things. Pretty. What's that a reference to? I don't know. Any dragon thing I've ever read ever. See, nerd. I, I, I don't, rem I don't, uh, I don't know any dragons. Pretend I, pretend I don't know any dragon stories. I never, I never, read any fantasy uh the only fantasy i know is final fantasy uh <laughs> so uh they, they like shiny things and they hoard them in their their dirt caves okay the okay and what's okay if you were to if you were to make your own fantasy story and you had a dragon what's the dragon's motivation Hmm. I think I would go with the dragon being like a really awesome dog. Like our okay. dog. Whenever we as a family watch dragon movies, usually we're like, that's Zelda. Or like how cool would that be if that was Zelda? Zelda? Was yes. That's Is... our, our our dog. Someone's telling you to throw away all the glitter. Uh Zelda. <laughs> Zelda's a, Zelda is a dog? Yes. Your dog? Yes. So you love uh, uh, Zelda the game? No, my husband. Um, he had her before I met. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, but I love her too. So oh, we so would you... want her to be. She's she's basically a little dragon anyway. Okay. Do you dress Zelda up in dragon clothes? I wish. One time we dressed her up in a tutu, and she did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what happens when you have little girls. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what? Catherine, Katty, Katie, Katie. Whatever. Yeah. Katie, tell me, tell me. What, what gets you super excited? Like, what can you just talk about for hours? Oh, there's a lot of things. Unfortunately, which it doesn't sound like it, but, or seem like it, but having a lot of things that you enjoy can be kind of annoying because there's so many of them. Okay. Um, Top three. Oh, oh, this is hard. Art supplies like color theory for sure. Okay. Um, man, I don't know. I thought you had, I had, I thought you had so many, so many interests. Yeah. It's more than three. Okay. Oh, well, let's just, let's just break, let's, let's break down this, this, uh, art supply thing, right? You worked at an art store for eight years. Well, between two of them. Yeah. Oh, well, you worked at two art stores for eight years. One for two, one for six. 
Okay, so you worked at two art stores, <laughs> one for two, <laughs> one for six. So not four and four, but two and six. Very important, were, yeah. Were they the same art store? Was it a different art store? No, it was two different companies. What companies? Um, the first one is Artists and Craftsmen Supply. Okay. Um, and the one that I was at the longest is Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. What are some cool stories from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff during that time of your life? Man. So that that was a very big time in my life. Um, and I really love that store. I was the store manager and I learned so much. Um, I think my favorite thing was learning how people have no idea about art uh -huh. at all, which is fine because then we can teach them. That's cool. But there were some really, we had a book um, that we would keep at the, the counter and they can't fire me because I don't work there anymore. So I'll still say this. Um, and it had all the most ridiculous things that, that customers would say when they came uh -huh. in. So we would keep it in that book. And I think one of my favorites was somebody came in and asked for the color of dew on an apple. They wanted us to pick out the paint color tube of paint for that. Do the paint do, I mean, a, a apple do. Yeah. Like, like a, a drop of water. On uh -huh. an apple. Do you have, do you have, uh, Oh, uh, that water paint. That. No. <laughs> So the color of dew, like, uh, what are some more outrageous ones? That's pretty funny. Like, yeah. like, I, I don't, I like, uh, what? Um, how you do gotta, you, mix... you gotta model that? It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> like that. Uh, we had a lot of like, how do you mix white? How do you make like? We had another art store call us because we were all out of white, and they were all out of white. I think it was back to school, and they asked us if we had something to mix white with like other colors not pigment we're like what um and then like how to mix red you know all that stuff about primaries that people don't know um lots of questions about bob ross bob ross yes yeah because everybody wants to be bob ross if they've never painted before and he looks yeah. he makes it so easy uh looking to do and it's not. He's he's Bob Ross, but he's been doing that for a lot of years, or he did it. So he's kind of a master at what he's doing. You can't just open up a Bob Ross box and start. He was um, a master at breaking down forms. Yeah. And very motivational. Yeah. What, what other weird questions did you receive? Oh, now I can't remember. It was just uh, like pretty frequently, I would say way more than most people would imagine. Um, though if you work with the public, I'm sure everyone has stories like that, like at restaurants and retail. Um, I think what the most important thing for me is that I realized was I should not be around that many people. Um, I am an introvert. Okay. I did not know that at the time. Um, so I would be, you know, on the, the floor with lots of customers around, lots of employees, and, uh, I would just get really cranky, uh -huh. unfortunately for them. But, um, that really kind of showed me that I do better if I'm not in a position where I'm around quite so many bodies. And that's helped a lot. It gives you a little bit more patience to deal with the people who give you questions that you want to roll your eyes at. Did you roll your eyes at all? No, it was very good. Your patience was never tested. Oh yeah, but I didn't roll my eyes. Do you ever get like mad customers at you uh, about like th this, this paint I got is not good or like it, how come I, when I paint this, uh, using this blue, it doesn't look like the waterfall that I see here. All the time. Yeah. And we had a really open return policy. So people would return stuff for, for reasons like that, or they would spend like $20 on a brush and get really upset because it didn't work right. And of course it's the, their, their hand with the brush. It's the user, not, yeah. not the product. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, did, so were, were there any chances when they when when a customer came in and bought a, like a, a tube of paint and like used all of it and said, this isn't good, can I return it? Yeah. And did you return it? Did you compensate them? Yeah. I never really agreed with that because people definitely tried taking advantage of it. But yeah, we had a really <laughs> awesome owner who was very like, trusting and wanted to have the honor code out there so that people would feel mm -hmm. more comfortable spending money on supplies. Yeah. And what did you did? Oh, well, let's, let's, let's back up. Did you get a discount on materials? Yes. And you capitalized? I think they still do. You do? I think so. Yeah, like just like you're uh, 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 grandfathered in? Yes, that's what Joe told me when I left. So I'm going to keep him to that. And, um, but yes, I, I had so many art supplies. Um, and because I did all the ordering, I had a lot of fun getting to know all the vendors and the vendor reps, um, cause they would want to give me some samples so that I could test the product and keep it in the store or, you know, sell it better. So I definitely took advantage of that and they knew that and they were totally cool with it and, uh, very mutually helpful. Did, did you get, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, do you still get samples? No, but I still have samples mm -hmm. from then. And that was uh, eight, eight years ago. And I still have stuff. I might need to start working at an art store then. It is awesome. You get to talk about art all day and make signs with the art supplies there. and. I'd go out and do demos in the community. Uh huh. Um, well, maybe I don't want to work at an art store anymore. I don't want to talk about art for eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I already have enough on my plate with the arts. Um, so why did you uh, why did you uh, uh, quit uh, working at the art store? Um, I wanted. Mm, okay, so I had my daughter, and. I had already started college about two years before that. I was a late college bloomer. So I didn't start till I was like 25. Um, and I started just because I knew I wanted to have a family. And even being a manager in an art store and trying to be an artist, that it just wasn't enough to make me feel safe. Um, Financially? Like, yeah. I don't know if I would agree with that now, but mm -hmm. everything worked out well. So mm -hmm. hindsight. Um, so when I had my daughter, I had been working, you know, like 40, 50 hours a week at the art store. I was still in college, so I was going to school. I think I started art school or nursing school when she was um, five months old. Mm -hmm. And wow. it was just it was a lot. And so I knew that I could focus on my daughter regardless, but then I would have to pick also the art store or nursing. And I was like, I need to, to focus on nursing right now. So How'd I, you do that? How, like, how, like that, that, that seems like it's almost also, impossible. It was a lot of debt, which also in hindsight was well, not, not a great idea. Well, not necessarily the, 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 the financial part, but like, the the working and then being a mother and then uh, uh, going to school all concurrently is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Um, what was your question? So like, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, uh, I forgot. Uh, um, it was how how did you pull off being being a mother, uh, 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 working forty to fifty hours a week, and then going to school all at the same time? I have only not done that for the last year. And the only thing I would take away is school is what right now I'm still working mostly full time, still uh -huh. painting, still having children. Um, and I think it's just like a, a personality thing. I don't like sitting still. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it worked for me. I mean, it was very, very hard, and I don't want to do that again. 
Um, well, I'm mean, like, uh, um, for my, ex like I have experience like with the, like the, how, how did, did you uh, uh, have like a childcare or like a babysitter, you know, while you're away or do you have really a strong family structure, you know? Um, I had a really great babysitter for my daughter when she was like starting at eight months old. Yeah. Um, and when I started nursing as a job, um, I had to do night shift because most new nurses do. And so she was awesome enough to even have my daughter stay overnight with her um, on those yeah. nights that I was working. So yeah. I definitely couldn't have done that without her there. Yeah, yeah. I, I can, can only imagine me almost uh, be like, what do you do? You know, like you can only be in one place. Yeah. And my daughter, um, she wasn't too mobile when I first started nursing school. So she would be my study buddy and uh -huh. I would read off all my, my cards to her to memorize stuff. And she would just sit there and giggle as long as I said it hilariously. It worked pretty yeah. well. Can you, can you do a, a, an impression right now? Yeah. Let's see. Um, so the eyeball has viscous fluid and then just stop there but yes yeah i still do that what what what's what and then what i don't know the viscous fluid and then it was the first word i could think of what's after but i do viscous? talk about <laughs> uh i don't remember but i do talk about rods and cones a lot because they're very cool okay what about rods and cones <laughs> those are um the little receptor cells in your eyeball and I can't remember which is which, but one of them allows in um, like bright light and the other one is for darker light and um, peripheral vision. Uh -huh. And it's the coolest like chemical reaction um, in our body where it's like if you have one, one thing that's constant, like this is the chemical reaction. So the like rods are made over here and then you turn on like the light and it destroys them and it turns to this and then it goes back and forth and back and forth. So that's why you have um, a little bit delay in seeing in night when you just come out of a bright room. So it, it destroys? Completely destroys all of the rods and or cones because I can't remember which one. And then it just slowly has to build back, which is remarkably fast considering how many. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah? Yes, and so, I also talk like that very boring, like, to purposely get my kids asleep sometimes if I um, don't feel like singing. Well, Katie, you don't have to talk very boringly in this, this session here. You can you can talk as excited <laughs> as you want to be. You can yeah, all right. release, the, 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 release the, the, the Kraken. Maybe. Is that, a, is, that, is that a reference to fantasy? Could be, not today. What's the Kraken from? I don't remember. You don't? Those are hard questions. What? Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, well, how do you paint white? Oh, you can't. <laughs> or you can paint white. There's titanium white. There's zinc white. There's all sorts of cool whites that are used for okay. different things. Can you, can you name, um, like you ever seen Forrest Gump? Yes. You know, you know, when, uh, I forgot his name, where, where the guy's, uh, going, uh, saying all the different shrimp varieties of shrimp. Yeah. Can you do that? But with like paint color, do they have to be in a certain order? Uh, I can just tell no. you my favorite paint colors. Okay. Okay. Um, cinnabar green light, favorite. What's cinnabar green light? It's like the green of a spring day when it has just been like kind of misty in the morning and the green grass is new and like super brilliantly bright. It's okay, like they I'm bottled saying. that. They bottled it, the essence. Okay, yep. what else? Cadmium red deep. It's just a beautiful color. It is. Anything quinacridone, but quinacridone magenta, rose, 
those are my favorite. And the transparent iron oxides for skin colors are a must and beautiful. Transparent iron oxides. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar. Those are with, um, uh, who are the people that do walnut oil? I don't M know. M. Graham. M. Graham? M. M is in Mary. I, uh, I don't know a lot of art materials. Uh, you'd be surprised, but I never worked at an art store, so yeah. I wasn't exposed. I wasn't walking around and noticing all these brands. I know like Windsor Newton and I know like generic brands. Yeah. I mean, I used to have to have all the codes memorized and stuff. Oh yeah. I didn't have to, but I did because my brain's like that. Yeah. And, and let's, let's talk about some of your work a little bit. I, I, I was, I was curious to know what or like what is your um what's the the concept or the symbolism behind uh your beginning series where uh you have these figures melting and then reconstituting themselves in different like like vines or, or roots connecting to each other um it, it's kind of like very Salvador Dali-ish in, in appearance with the melting of forms. What's the, what's the inspiration, the, the idea behind it? You know, if you were to write a novel about it, like what would that be about? It would be about consciousness and journey through your own mind and observation um, and kind of just that growth of self awareness and um all of that that i painted the not all of it but most of it i painted without really having a reason why um i just always painted or, or like doodled figures like that like even in like 10th grade 11th grade my school books are filled with doodles of things kind of like melting into each other um mm -hmm. And I, when I started doing oils, I, I learned on like landscapes just because I thought it would be easier. And then I went to portraits, but I knew that I wanted to go back to those doodles. Mm -hmm. So I did. Um, and I just kind of thought of them as like a, a connection, like a way to look at um, how we connect to each other. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really look at it much past that. and. Um, I was in kind of like a weird part in my life where I was very sheltered without really realizing I was very sheltered, um, like to myself. And I think over the last couple of years, I've really been able to go back and look at those pieces and see more what I was trying to tell myself that I wasn't aware of then. Like almost every piece, um, at the time I would just say like each one is an emotion and a visualization of that emotion. but. I thought they were all just like really pretty, happy emotions, um, pretty pictures. And now I see them and I can really feel the emotion that was there that I didn't acknowledge before. And I feel like some of it was myself warning myself um, or just trying to like extrapolate more on whatever was happening at that time. Um, so the, the ones that I do now are a little bit more purposeful, but I love that series because it is so like raw and beautiful. And I love the black background and how it just really highlights that, that one second in time um, mm -hmm. for whatever that painting is. But um, I think now looking back, they're more like, like chords not really strands, but like cords that connect us to each other. So sometimes they're um, like, there's one where a girl is staring up into the sky and she's lying down and there's strands all around her. Like she's in a meadow, but the meadows, um, are like the melty stuff and she's looking up. And so all the strands are around her, but nothing's at the sky that she's looking at. So I had really just thought of that as just a beautiful image. 
because it, it's really pretty and um, I like painting it. But looking at it now, I'm like, she could not get away from all those cords, from all those connections um, and see past herself. Mm -hmm. So she was looking at the stars, but without looking at herself first. So maybe looking in the wrong spot. So you, you said that you said that um, you looked at them as 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 happy, like you like it caused that like a joy was 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 that a reflection of like your your feeling of joy of just painting, you know, yes. at the time and you weren't you weren't associating that this was, uh, as you said, you were sheltered. Right. And then and, and as you said, those those chords were like symbols or metaphors for like maybe you seeking out or, or yearning for like friends or, or uh, people to 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 uh, talk to or or how, break that down is that something close or what, what's your words with that the first part is spot on i think it was definitely the happiness of the process of painting mm -hmm. um that's like a really easy way for me to to fill my cup, like to, to have energy and be happy. Um, but the shelter does more metaphorically and more, um, yeah, just more in my head sheltered from myself. Um, and I had, I had friends and I had, people to talk to but I didn't know that I needed to talk about stuff because I just would like block everything out and you did you need to talk to someone about stuff I think I should have acknowledged it myself and then I could have found someone to talk to but if you don't know yeah you can't do anything about it um and I think that it sounds kind of vague as I'm saying it out loud, but I think it's probably an experience a lot of people have um, when there's just like issues going on that they are kind of in denial about or are trying to like disassociate from, uh -huh. you know, there's some parts of your mind that are hard to, to look at. And that's actually the, the purpose of the name of my um, art art company, art business is shadow work portraits. And that's what shadow work is, is going into those parts of your mind that maybe you don't want to, because for some reason you think that they're not good or they make you mad. Like if, if you say something and you're like, ah, oh, cringy, mm -hmm. um, or you say something really mean, like immediately to somebody and you're not sure why, those are all things that we tend not to look at um because it's it's hard to and we just kind of shy away from stuff as humans that is is kind of scary or or bad um so a part of shadow work is looking at those things that you don't want to looking at what makes you uncomfortable and not even saying that that's okay or to get rid of them but just acknowledging that they're there and acknowledging that that is a part of you as a, a whole. Um, and you can't always be positive. You have to have everything together. And that's what I like to do with my portraits is to show the whole of somebody, not just the good, not just the bad, but the dark parts and the light parts. Are you familiar with H.R. Kiker? Yes. But I haven't looked at that for a long time. What's up with him? Oh, he's 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 you know he's no longer with us. But like, uh, uh, do you do you feel like your work, or at least that maybe that series maybe can be kind of relate like related to his his concept? Because what what he was drawing or he was painting was basically his nightmares. You know that's that's what those were like nightmares to him uh all those scary uh 
like biological monsters, you know, um, is, is that something similar, you know, but you didn't know? I don't think so. No, I think it's just more a suppressed part trying to get out, but I, I did always really appreciate his technique and his art. Um, cause yeah, he's a, he's a very good artist. Um, but I don't, I don't think it was from a nightmare perspective, just, mm -hmm. uh, not visible perspective like there's a, a curtain that had been pulled and i was painting what was behind the curtain without knowing what was behind the curtain and it was it was therapeutic yeah definitely not enough because you know i didn't know it was there but um i think in general anytime i paint it is therapeutic and meditative what? and love and what's that and meditative like that's meditative and, and that's what you work like when you work right now, it's, is it you, is it you resolving issues in your life that you don't know to be in existence yet, in existence yet, but like, it's your subconscious moving onto the palette or painting surface? I think it could be. Yeah. Um, I like to think that I'm more aware now and, uh -huh. um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll do some fun abstracts and just let stuff come out and it'll end up looking like something else. And later I'll have a better idea of what it, what it was about. So yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But I don't think it's all bad stuff anymore. I think I've, um, I've done lots of work. Like what kind of work? Like, like artwork or just like work in general? Oh, like therapy and artwork um, all of that art therapy is a real thing and it's um that would be something interesting to look at I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be very silent until it gets really awkward okay I'm gonna win at this though oh I, I know you will uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> trying to to make this be but it, it's gonna be um Artwork always makes you happy. Or is there ever a time when you're working on your art where it doesn't? Uh, no, if I get frustrated, I put it down. Or I flip it over. You flip it over. You know, I, you I do it upside down for perspective purposes. Okay, okay. Tell me something about you that not a lot of people know. Hmm. I have crystals in my bra. What? Yep. Crystals? Yeah. I like rocks. Okay. Why why <laughs> crystals? Uh oh. I can't see you. Um Are you still there? Are you back? <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, we're having some issues here. Let's start. Uh, so do you see me? You. What's that? Let's try this. Switch screens around. Are you still here? No? Uh-oh. Well, anyways, Catherine, Catherine, can you hear me? So we're going to restart this real shortly and try to get this uh, um, squared away. Uh, thank you for stopping by. We're going to restart that broadcast shortly and uh, we'll finish this up. Okay.